Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NewCoder.com. And in this video, we're going to give an overview of the CRUD application that we're going to be building, as well as going over what things you should be familiar with in order to follow along with this tutorial series. So the technologies that you should be somewhat familiar with are Node.js and Express.js, which we're going to be using for our server side. We're going to be using a database called MongoDB. And for our client side, we're going to be using jQuery, the Fetch API, and Bootstrap. And you should know a little bit about HTML. And last but not least, for our server side and client side, we're going to be using a programming language called JavaScript. So now let's actually take a look at the application that we're going to be building within this tutorial series. So this is going to be our to do application that we're going to be building. It's a very simple interface. So we just have a user input box where we're going to type our to do. So let's say I want to type clean garage. I can do so hit create. And you can see that this gets stored. Now, if I hit refresh, you can see that the data persists. So that means that we are saving it within our database. If I want to edit this for something, let's say clean room instead, I could click edit. And you can see that we get updated with clean room, hit refresh, data persists. And if I hit delete, it deletes the to do. And if I want to create multiple to do's, I could say clean room, clean house, and etc. And all this data will persist within our MongoDB database. Welcome to part one of building our CRUD application from scratch. So essentially what we're going to do in this tutorial is install our packages, set up our express application and connect to our MongoDB database. So to get started, I'm just going to go to file. I'm going to go to open folder. I'm going to right click, go to new. We're going to create a new folder. So I'm just going to call it MongoDB underscore CRUD. Let's select it. And afterwards, what I want to do now is let's open up the terminal. And from here, I'm just going to type CLS to clear the terminal. And that's because there's a visual bug with Visual Studio Code at the moment. And what I want to do now is install our packages that our application is going to be dependent on. So I'm going to type npm init. And we're going to pass in the flag Y to get the default values. And now I want to install the body parser module. And the body parser module is going to be used to parse JSON between the client side and the server side. Next, we're going to install Express. And we're just going to use Express for routing. Next, we're going to install MongoDB. And this is just going to be the MongoDB drivers. And this is going to help us connect to our database. And last but not least, we're going to install the path module. And we're going to be using the path module just to serve a static HTML file to the user. So now that we have our packages installed, I'm just going to go up here. I'm going to hit control B to bring up the Explorer. I'm going to go to package.json. I'm just going to change the main to app.js. And this is just a personal preference. I prefer app.js as opposed to index.js. So now I'm just going to save that. Let's close out of this. We're going to create two files. I'm going to create my app.js file. And our second file that we're going to create is going to be called db.js. And this is where we're going to actually connect to MongoDB. Now from here, I want to code our app.js file first. So I'm just going to click here. Control B, get rid of that explorer. And we could get rid of the terminal for now. And what I want to do is start importing our modules that we just installed. So I'm just going to say const express is equal to require express. And let's give a space here. And next, what we're going to do is bring in our body parser module. Afterwards, Let's create an instance of our express application. So I'm just going to say const app is equal to express and let's call it. Now we're going to tell our express application to use the body parser module. And we're going to be parsing JSON data 
sent from the client side to the server side using the body parts module. Next, let's require our path module. After that, let's bring in our database stuff. So I'm just going to say const db is equal to require db. And last but not least, we're going to have one more variable here and we're going to call it collection. And we're going to call the collection to do. So we're going to have a database and that database is going to have a collection within it called to do. And that's going to hold our, our to do's. So now let's head over to our db.js file. And now we're just going to import our MongoDB driver. So I'm just going to say const Mongo client is going to be equal to require MongoDB. And we're going to require the Mongo client from it. We're also going to require the object ID from the MongoDB module. So I'm just going to say const object ID is going to be equal to require MongoDB dot object ID. Next, let's give our database a name. So I'm just going to say const db name is going to be equal to and I'm just going to call it crud mongodb. After that, we're going to code our URL and this is basically the default location of where your mongodb would be located on your local machine. So I'm just going to type mongodb localhost 27017. And the last configuration that we're going to give our database is the options that we could pass in. So I'm just going to say Mongo options. And we're going to be using the new URL parser. Let's set that to true. So now let's actually give this a state. So we're going to be using this db.js file to actually create the connection between node.js and our mongodb server. So now I'm just going to say const state and the default state of this is going to be equal to null. So this is going to signify that, hey, we don't have a database yet. Next, let's actually write our connect method. So I'm just going to say const connect. It's going to be equal and we're going to pass in a callback and we're just going to say the following. If state dot DB. So if there is a database connection, we're just going to call the callback. If there isn't a database connection, we're going to use the Mongo client to connect to the database. And here we're going to check if there's any errors. If there's an error, we're going to pass it back to our callback. If there's no error, we're going to set the state and then we're going to call our callback. All right. So this is our connect method. Let's not forget to add the semicolon here and we got two more functions to code. So let's get to it. So the next function that we're going to code is to get the primary key. So I'm just going to say const get primary key. And they're going to pass in the ID of the document. And all we're going to do is return object ID. And we're going to pass in the ID that they passed in to us. And this is going to return an object ID object which will be used to actually query the database by the primary key. Next, let's actually create a method to actually get the database. So we're just going to say get DB. And I'm just going to say return state dot DB. So now let's actually expose all these functions that we created. So I'm just going to say module that exports. And I'm just going to say get DB connect and get primary key method. All right, so now I'm just going to save this. And now let's head back to our app.js file. So now that we have all this set up, let's actually connect to our database. So now I'm just going to say db.connect. And this is the function that we just created in our db file. 
we're going to pass in a callback and we're going to say if error we're going to console.log unable to connect to database and we're going to terminate the application and we should probably wrap this within curly braces and if we were able to connect to the database successfully, we're going to say else app.listen. And you could use whatever port that you want. I'm just going to use port 3000. And we're going to pass in a callback. And we're just going to say connected to database. App listening on port 3000. So now if I was to save this, let's put a semicolon here and then save it. Let's go open up a terminal, type CLS again. I'm going to type node app. And you can see that we got no error. So that means we bypassed this error statement and we executed our else statement. So we're connected to the database and our app is listening on port 3000. Welcome to part two of building our CRUD application from scratch. So in this tutorial, we're going to be covering our server side read portion of our CRUD application. So we're going to code two get routes. The first get route is actually going to send a static HTML file to the user. And the second get route is actually going to query the database for all the to do's within our to do collection. And it's going to return that to the user. So let's actually get started encoding this. So I'm just going to go down here. I'm going to say app.get and we're going to give it a path of forward slash, give it this function. And then when we get down here, all we're going to do is send a static HTML file. So I'm just going to say res.send file. And here's where our path module comes in handy. Dot join. Now this file doesn't exactly exist yet, but we're going to be creating this within a future tutorial. So now let's actually head on over to our second app.get and I'm just going to call this app.get and I'm going to call this get to do's. Then here we're going to pass in our function, our request object, our response object. And within here, I'm going to say db.getDB. Now remember, getDB is going to return to us our database connection. So now I'm just going to say dot collection and we're going to pass in the name of our collection. And I'm going to call the method find. And we want all the documents within our to do collection. But this is going to return to us a cursor and we don't want the cursor. We want the actual documents. So I'm going to call a method called dot to array and then within here this is going to take a callback function I'm just going to say error documents and let's actually move this over a little bit and then within here we're just going to say if there's an error we're just going to console this out to the user but traditionally you would want to send an error message back to the user but if there is no error what we're going to do is first, we're going to print this out onto the console just to make sure that we're getting our documents back from the server. And we're going to say res.json the documents. All right, so now let's actually test this out. So I'm just going to hit control S to save. Let's bring up the terminal. Go to new terminal. I'm going to type cos node app. Let's bring up Google Chrome. I'm going to type local host port 3000. And we called it get to do's. And you can see that we get back an empty array. And that's because we don't have anything within our database. So let's head back to Visual Studio Code. I'm going to hit Control C, cancel out of that. Let's start up the Mongo shell. And now I'm just going to Go back up here, control B, 
let's find out what we named our database. So we named it crud mongodb. So I'm just going to say use crud mongodb. I'm going to say db dot and let's go back to app.js and see what we named our collection to do. So I'm just going to say to do dot insert. And we're going to insert a couple of to do's. So I'm just going to say to do and I'm going to say clean room. So let's insert that and let's insert clean. I don't know, garage. So let's insert that. All right. So let's cancel out of that. No to app. Let's wait for our express application to boot up, head over to Chrome, hit refresh. And you can see that our to do's are being sent to the client side and that it is in JSON. Welcome to part three of building our CRUD application from scratch. So in this tutorial, we're going to be covering our server side update portion of our CRUD application. So to get started, let's actually code our route. So I'm just going to say app.put. And I'm going to pass in forward slash colon ID. Now this is going to be our route param and ID is going to be the primary key of the document that we wish to update. Next, we're going to pass in our function. So I'm just going to say request and response. Now from here, let's actually get the ID. So I'm just going to say const to do ID is equal to request dot params dot ID. Next, what I want to do is actually get the user's input and that's going to be found in the request dot body. The user is going to be sending us JSON. So I'm just going to say cons user input is equal to request dot body. Now from here, let's actually connect to our database. So I'm just going to say DB dot get DB. Then we're going to call our collection, which is our to do collection. Now from here, I'm going to call a function called find one and update. And the first argument is going to be the query object. So what do we want to find by? So we're going to find by the ID. So I'm just going to pass in ID and I'm just going to pass in to do. Next, what we want to do is pass in the document that we want to update with. So I'm just going to say set and I'm going to say to do colon user input dot to do. Next, what I want to do is pass in an option. And the option that I want is I want the return original to be set to false. So I'm just going to say return original and we're going to set that to false. So let me just move this here. Now from here, we're going to pass in our callback function. So I'm just going to say error and we're going to get the result. So now let's scroll down here. And from here, we could test if there was any errors and I'm just going to print it out onto the console. But traditionally, you would want to send something back to the user to let the user know that, hey, when we tried to update the document that you wanted, we couldn't fulfill that request. So now I'm just going to say else. So if everything went well, we're going to be sending that data back to the user in JSON format. So I'm just going to say result. So now let's add a semicolon here and let's just double check this. And all of this looks good. So let's actually test this out. So I'm going to open up the terminal and clear the terminal node app. Let's start up our application. We're going to go to Postman and you can see here that I already have this set up. So the URL is localhost port 3000. This is the ID of one of the documents that I have currently. We're making a put request. We're sending back JSON data here. So you can see here and this is the data that we're sending back and we can make this whatever we want. So let's just change this to uh, clean something for tutorial. All right, so this is going to be our to do. And I'm going to go here and make a request. So I'm just going to hit send. And you can see that we get an error and I right away I already know what's going on. So when we passed in our to do, this is a string. We want an object ID 
object. So I'm going to call db dot get primary key. We're going to pass in the ID of this to do. I'm going to save this. Let's actually cancel this node app. Rerun our application. We're going to go to Postman again. And this time, let's actually go over the response we got. So it said the number that we found was equal to zero. And that's because we didn't pass the right ID for the primary key. So now if I send this, this number should be one and updated existing should be equal to true. So let's send it. And you can see right here, the number that we've updated is one. This document did indeed exist within our database, so it's true. And you can see the values that we have. The ID is still the same, but we've updated it to clean something for a tutorial. And if we hit another thing, let's actually make sure that this update is working. And we're going to say change to something else. I'm going to hit send one more time. And you can see the ID is the exact same thing, but we've changed the to do to change to something else. Welcome to part four of building our CRUD application from scratch. So in this tutorial, we're going to be covering our server side create portion of our CRUD application. So to get started, we're just going to code our route. So I'm just going to say app.post. So we're going to be posting the to do that we want to insert within our database. So we're going to give it the path of forward slash, and then we're just going to pass in our function, the request object and the response object. Now from here, what I want to end up doing is getting the user's input, the to do that the user wants to insert inside the database. So I'm just going to say const user input. And we're just going to say request.body. So the client side, the user is going to post JSON to us, and that's going to be within the request.body. Next, let's actually get the database connection. So I'm just going to say db.getbb. Then from here, I'm just going to say collection, pass in our to do collection. Then I'm going to call the function insert one. The first argument is going to be the document that we want to insert. So I'm just going to say user input. And the second argument is going to be the callback function. So I'm just going to say error and I'm going to say result. Now from here, we're going to test if there's any errors. So I'm just going to log it onto the console. Now in a production environment, you would want to say something more than just logging it onto the console. You'll probably want to display an error message to the user. Next, I'm just going to say else. We're just going to send it back to the user. I'm just going to pass it as JSON. I'm going to say result, result. And I'm going to say document result dot ops index zero. Now we're actually going to test this out. So you actually see what's inside result and what's inside result dot ops. So now I'm just going to save this. Let's open up the terminal, new terminal. Just going to clear it. I'm going to say node app. Let's start up the server. Let's head over to Postman and you can see that we have our local host port 3000 here with the forward slash URL. We're making a post request and this is a JSON object that we're sending back to the server. So let's say that we want to post uh, clean something. So this is a to do that we want to insert within our to do collection. So now I'm just going to hit send. And now you can see the response that we're getting back from the server. So this is the result that we sent back and this is the document. So result has a property of N. So that's the number inserted and it says that it was okay. So it was set to one. So that means everything was inserted properly. And number two is the document that we just inserted. So you can see the to do here matches up here and it's given an primary key, which is listed here. So now let's actually see if this was saved. So I'm going to go back here. Let's make a get request. Remember what was our route? We said get to do's. I'm going to go to send. And you can see right here 
that our to do clean something was inserted inside the database properly. Welcome to part five of building our CRUD application from scratch. So in this tutorial, we're going to be covering our server side delete portion of our CRUD application. So to get started, let's actually code our route. So I'm just going to say app.delete. And the path that we're going to use is an express param. So I'm just going to say forward slash colon ID. And this ID is going to be the ID, the primary key of the to do document that we want to delete from our database. Next, we're going to pass in our function, our request object, our response object. Now within here, the first thing we need to do is get the ID. So I'm just going to say const to do ID is equal to request.params.id. Next, let's actually connect to our database. So I'm just going to come down here. I'm going to say db.getdb. Then I'm going to call the collection method. We're going to pass in our collection, our to do collection. Then I'm going to call the function find one and delete. So the first argument is the query object. So we want to find this document by the ID. So I'm just going to say ID. Then I'm going to say db.get primary key. And we're going to pass in our to do ID. The second argument is going to be the callback function. So we're going to get an error or we're going to get the result. So let me just fix this by adding the curly braces here. Error or result. Let's see what's happening here. And this looks good. So we have our error and result. Next, we need to test to see whether or not there was an error. So if there was an error, that means we couldn't delete any. So if there was an error, what we want to do is actually print this out to the console. You can also send some kind of warning back to the user that an error has occurred. Otherwise, what we're going to do is send JSON data back to the user. So now I'm just going to save this. I'm going to go to terminal, new terminal. Let's clear this out, node app. And our application is running. If I go to Postman, you can see that I already have this running. So we have our get to do's route here. So I'm just going to send this again. So you guys see that these are all the to do's within our MongoDB database. So what I need is let's say I want to delete this to do inserting into the database. So I'm just going to copy this primary key. We're going to go back up here. Let's paste it. So we have localhost port 3000 and the ID of the document that we want to delete. I'm going to go here. We're going to make a delete request. And now if I hit send, let's see what we get back. And this is the response that we're getting back from the server. So number deleted is one. And you can see the value of the document that we deleted. And we get OK with the value of one. So everything went fine. So let's actually prove this out. If I go back here, get our to do's one more time, hit send. You can see that the document that was there is no longer there. So this is pretty much the server side delete portion of our CRUD application. Welcome to part six of building our CRUD application from scratch. So in this tutorial, we're going to be building our static HTML file that we're going to be serving to our user. So in the previous tutorials, we've created two get routes. One of them is to serve the static HTML file to the user. And the second get route is to actually get all to, to do's within our database. So we're going to be focusing on this route. So to get started, I'm just going to hit control B to bring up the Explorer. I'm going to right click new file and we're going to create a new file called index.html. So now I'm just going to hit control B again, get rid of that. And now I just want to head over to getbootstrap.com. So we're going to be using bootstrap four in order to build our HTML file. So from here, you can see that Bootstrap actually gives us a starter template, and this is going to include all the CSS that we need and the JavaScript that we need. So I'm just going to copy this. Let's head back over to Visual Studio Code. And now I'm just going to paste this in here. Let's actually change the title. So I'm just going to change it to to do CRUD application, and we're going to get rid of our H1 tag here. 
So from here, let's give it a container. The first row is going to be where we input our to do user input. The second row is going to be an unordered list, which is going to be displaying our to do's to the user. Now from here, let's head over back to Bootstrap and we're going to get our form. So we're just going to head over to the search bar. I'm going to type form group and I'm just going to click that. And this is going to take us here and this looks pretty good. So we have our label and we have an input where the user can type his to do's to submit. So I'm just going to copy this. Let's head back over to Visual Studio Code and we're just going to paste this within here. So let's actually tidy this up a bit. Now we only need one of these, so I'm just going to delete the second one. So now let's just scroll over to the right a bit and we're going to change some of this stuff. So we're going to change the example label to to do. And we're going to give an ID attribute to our input field. So we're just going to change this from form group example input to to do user input. And we're going to change the placeholder to say to do. Next, we actually have to create a button so that the user can actually submit. And we're going to give it a class of primary. And let's actually call the button create. Now you could call this button post because that's the endpoint that we're going to be hitting when we click this button, but I'm just going to call it create and that's going to create our to do. And before I forget, let's actually change what the labels for. So it's not form group example input It's going to be for our to do. All right. Now from here, this actually looks good. So let's head over back to bootstrap and get our unordered list that we're going to be using to display our to do's to the user. So from here, let's go back to our search. I'm going to type unordered and let's click the example they give us. So this is an unordered list and you can see that it has a bunch of list items here. So I'm just going to copy this. Let's head back over to Visual Studio Code. So from here, let's just move over here and we're going to paste it in the second row. So I'm just going to tidy this up a bit. Now let's give an ID attribute to our list group. I'm just going to say ID and I'm just going to call it display because this is just going to be displaying our to do's to the user. And for right now, I'm going to leave these list items here, but we are going to be dynamically adding these list items to our unordered list. All right, so that's it for our HTML part. Let's actually start coding some JavaScript. So I'm just going to come down here and we're going to add a script tag here. Next, let's do a document.ready. So now let's actually get our HTML elements that we attached ID attributes to. So I'm just going to say const display, and this is going to be the display for our to do's. I'm going to say const form, and this is going to be the ID of our form. And I'm going to say const to do user input. And this is going to be the to do that the user types in. So first off, I think I forgot to add the ID to the form. So let me do that now. So right here we have our form. We're going to give it an ID attribute and we're going to call it form. And we're giving this ID attribute to the form because we want to prevent default. So when the user actually submits, we're going to prevent the default action that takes place because we want to make a RESTful call to our server API. So now let's go back down here. So next we're going to code several helper functions. So I'm just going to say const reset to do's input. And this is going to reset the, the to do user input field. Next, we're going to create a function called build IDs, and this is going to build 
unique IDs to give to our HTML elements. And it's going to take in a to do document. And we're just going to return an object with our IDs. So I'm just going to say edit ID and edit ID is going to be attached to our edit button. So we can attach a click event to that edit button. And you can see that we're taking advantage of the primary key that we get from our to do document to make it unique. Next, we're going to code delete ID. And delete ID is going to be attached to our delete button. So we could attach a click event to our delete button. Next, we're going to create a list item ID. And this is going to be the ID of the LI element within our unordered list. And the last ID that we're going to create is going to be called to do ID. And this is going to be the ID of our to do. So now let's code another helper function. And this function is actually going to build the template, the list item that we want to append to our unordered list. So I'm just going to say const build template. And it's going to take in two parameters. I'm going to pass in our to do and the IDs. And we're just going to return a string that will be appended. So from here, let's actually scroll up and let's get our LI element. So I'm just going to copy one of these. And realistically, we could just delete this. So now let's go back down. Let's paste this one within here. Let's delete this. Now let's give this li element an ID. So we're just going to say ID. And it's going to be equal to IDs dot list item ID. Next, let's give it a row. And we're going to make each column of size four. So the first column is where we're actually going to be storing our to do. So I'm just going to give it an attribute of ID. And we're just going to say IDs dot to do ID and we want to actually display our to do to the user. I'm just going to say to do dot to do. Next, let's go back to the last column. So I'm just going to give this an additional class and I'm just going to call it say text to the right. So we want our buttons to be to the right of this. And we're going to have two buttons within here. So I'm just going to say button type equal to the button. We're going to give it a class of secondary. And we're going to give it an attribute of the ID that we created. And the button is just going to say edit. So now that we have our edit button, let's copy this. And now it's time to make our delete button. So we're going to change this from secondary to the danger class. And we're going to change IDs to delete ID. And the name of our button is going to be called delete. So let me just take a look at this to make sure I typed out everything all right. And this looks good. And the last helper function that we're going to be coding is called display to do's. And that's actually going to display our to do's to the user. So I'm just going to say const display to do's. And we're going to pass in data. And this data is going to be an array of to do's. So I'm just going to say data dot for each. 
And we're going to get a to do out of each of these. Next, let's get the IDs of each to do. So I'm just going to say let IDs equal build IDs. And we're going to pass in our to do. Next, let's actually append each of these list items to our unordered list. So I'm just going to say display dot append. And we're going to call the build template method that we just created. And we're going to pass in our to do and our IDs. Afterwards, we're going to call our edit to do function. Now we haven't created this function yet, and we'll do so in the next tutorials. But basically the edit to do function and our delete to do function is going to add a click event to our edit button and our delete button. I'm just going to say to do and we're going to pass in IDs dot to do ID and IDs dot edit ID. And likewise, we're just going to say delete to do and we're going to pass in our to do our IDs dot list item ID and IDs dot delete ID. So let's add a semicolon here. And this is pretty much where I want to leave you guys at. So we created our HTML file and we've added all our helper functions that's going to help display our data to the user. Welcome to part seven of building our CRUD application from scratch. So in this tutorial, what we're going to do is display our to do's to the user by making an HTTP get request using the fetch API. So if you remember from our previous tutorials, we coded this get route, this get to do's. And the job of our get to do's route is to actually get all our to do's from the database and return it. And it's going to be returned within an array. So now if I head over to our index.html, what we're going to do is have the fetch API call this get to do's route. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to create a function called get to do. So I'm just going to say const get to do's. And within here, we could use the fetch API. So I'm just going to say fetch and it's going to be the URL or the endpoint that we want to hit. So I'm just going to say get to do's. The next argument is going to be the type of method that we want to use. So we called it a get method. Next, we could call the then method. And we're going to get a response back from the server. And I'm just going to say return response.json. And this is going to parse the JSON for us, but this is going to return a promise. So when you return a promise, we could chain that promise. So I'm just going to call the then method once again, pass in our data. And now here, I'm just going to console.log the data. And we're going to pass this data, this array of to do's to our helper method. So I'm just going to call it display to do's and we're going to pass in our data. So now let's just add this semicolon here and let's actually invoke our get to do's method. And now if I was to save this and let's open up a terminal and I'm just going to clear it. I'm going to say node app. Let's start up the server. So now let's open up our browser. So now from here, let's just type localhost port 3000. And you can see that our to do's are being loaded. So let's bring up the developer tools. So I'm just going to hit F12 and we go to our console. You can see the array that the server is sending us. So if we open that up, you can see our to do's. So we have our primary key and the to do. Now let's head over back to Visual Studio Code to see how this is working. So now if we come back here, we can see that our array of to do's is being passed into our display to do's. So let's take a look at what display to do's is doing. So display to do's is actually taking an array of to do's. It's building its unique IDs for our HTML elements and it's calling build template. Now build template is going to be used to build our list element that we're going to add to the unordered list. So you can see that happening here. Once we build this HTML template, we're returning it and is going to be appended to our unordered list. So that's pretty much how we are displaying our to-dos to the user. And welcome to part eight of building our CRUD application from scratch. So in this tutorial, we're gonna be making an HTTP post request using the fetch API. 
So if you remember from our previous tutorial, we coded this post route and we just gave it forward slash. It's going to take data from the users. So we're going to have to post data back via the body. And you can see that it returns two things. The result, whether or not we d successfully deleted the item or not. And it returns back the inserted document that we just inserted. So let's head over to index.html and let's actually code this. So from here, we're going to use our form that we have up here. So this is our form and what we want to do is prevent the default form submission. So we're going to come down here and I'm just going to say form dot submit. And this is going to take in a function and it's going to have an event. And what we're going to do is say E dot prevent default from occurring. Next, we're going to call the fetch API. So I'm just going to say fetch. We're going to use our endpoint of forward slash. The next argument is going to be our options. So the first option is we're posting data back to the server. I'm just going to say post. Our second property is going to be the body, what we're sending back to the database. So I'm just going to say JSON dot stringify. And we're going to send back our to do. So we're just going to use to do use our input and we're going to get the value that our input field has at the moment. So now let me just move this over here. And the last option is we're going to have to pass in headers. And what a header is, is it tells the server what kind of content you're sending back to it. So I'm just going to say content type. And we're sending back JSON. Now from here, let's call the then method. So I'm just going to say then. We're going to get our response back from the server. We're going to return that response.json, which is going to be a promise that parses the data for us. We're just going to call it then on the promise that's being returned. And we're going to get our data back. Next, we're going to have to test to see whether or not we successfully inserted the document. I'm just going to say if the data result.ok is equal to one and data dot result n is equal to one. That means our to do was successfully inserted into our database. So I'm just going to say let IDs equal to build IDs. And we're going to pass in our document. Next, we're going to call the display method. So this is going to append a new list to our unordered list. And last but not least, we're going to have to attach our click events to our edit button. So I'm just going to call edit to do, which is a function we haven't created yet. And we're going to pass in our to do, our to do ID, and the ID of our button. Then we're going to have to attach an event to our delete button as well. We're going to pass in our to do the list item ID. And the reason we're passing in the list item ID is because we need the ID of the list that we want to delete. And we're going to pass in the ID of the delete button. So for now, I'm just going to comment these two out because they don't exist at the moment. So right now we have display.append and this looks good to me. And last but not least, once this successfully happens, what we want to do is actually reset our to do's input. So let's actually test this out. So I'm just going to hit control shift back tick. Let's clear the terminal node app. Let's open up a browser. So now let's actually test this out. So I'm just going to come up here and testing post. So I'm going to click the create button. And you can see that our to do was successfully posted to the database. So I'm just going to hit refresh to see if it actually worked. And you can see that our data is persisting. So that's the basics of using the fetch API to post to the server. And welcome to part nine of building our CRUD application from scratch. So in this tutorial, we're going to be making a HTTP delete request using the fetch API.
So in the previous tutorials, you can see that we coded our app.delete route and it's using a route parameter. We get that ID of the to-do that we want to delete here. And then here we call the find one and delete function. We pass in our primary key or the ID. And what we end up getting is the result, whether or not we successfully deleted the to-do document within our collection. So now let's actually head over to index.html and let's actually code our delete to do function. So now from here, I'm just going to say const delete to do. And it's going to take in three parameters. It's going to take a to do. It's going to take the list item ID and it's going to take the delete ID. Now to do is the document that we want to delete. List item ID is the ID of the list element within our unordered list that we want to delete. And the delete ID is the ID that we've given to our delete button. So now let's actually code this out. First, we need to get our delete button. So I'm just going to say let delete button is equal to this. Next, let's actually add a click event to our delete button. So I'm just going to come down here, delete button dot click, and we're going to pass in our click handler. And within here, let's actually call our delete route using the fetch API. So I'm just going to say fetch and we're going to pass in our route. Next, let's actually pass in our options. So we're actually making a delete request. So I'm just going to say method and we're going to pass in delete. Now from here, let's call the then method to actually execute this fetch function. I'm going to say then. What we're going to end up getting back is the response from the server. Next, we're going to return that response and we're going to call the JSON method on it. And this is going to return to us a promise. So now we could promise chain. I'm just going to call it then again. And we should get back our data that is fully parsed. Now from here, let's actually test to see whether or not we successfully deleted the to do. So I'm just going to say if data dot OK is equal to one. That means we successfully deleted our to do. So now we need to remove the li element from our unordered list. So how do we do that? Well, we have our list ID. And we're just going to call the method remove. So this is going to remove our li element from our unordered list. So let's actually add a semicolon here. All right, now from here, let's go down to our display to do's. And all right, so we already have the, our delete to do uncommented, so this should work. So now I'm just gonna save this. Let's go back to app.js. Let's actually open up our terminal. And from here, let's actually run our application, node app. And you can see that our application is up and running. And now let's head over to our web browser and let's actually test this out. So from here, you can see our to do application is up and running. So I'm just going to refresh this just to triple check. And what we want to do is actually hit our delete button to see if it works. So I'm just going to hit delete and you can see that testing post is gone. If I hit delete again, you can see clean room is gone. And if I hit refresh, you can see that this does persist onto the database and that those to do's are actually deleted from our database. And welcome to part 10 of building our CRUD application from scratch. So in this tutorial, we're going to be making a HTTP put request using the fetch API. So in the previous tutorial, we coded our app.put route. So this is the endpoint that we're going to hit. We're using route params, and this is going to be the ID of the document that we want to edit. We're also sending data back via the body, as you can see here. And this is going to be the data that we want to update with. So right here, you can see that we are finding by the ID. So this gets the document that we want to update. This is updating the document here. And if you scroll here, you can see that we're sending back the result, whether or not we were successfully able to update the document or not. So now let's actually head over to our index.html file and actually code this. So I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to call the function edit to do. And it's going to take in three parameters. First is going to be the to do. 
Second is going to be the to do ID. And third is going to be the edit ID. The first parameter to do is obviously the document that we want to edit. To do ID is the ID of the to do. And edit ID is the ID of the button. So now let's just come down here. And now from here, what I want to do is actually get our button. And once we get our button, what we want to do is attach a click event to it. So I'm just going to say edit button dot click. Pass in our callback. And from here, we can use the fetch API to hit our endpoint in our server. So I'm just going to say fetch. And the endpoint is forward slash. And the ID of the to do that we want to edit. The second argument is going to be our options. So we're just going to say method and we're going to set that to a put request. Next, we're going to set our headers and our headers are going to be set and they're going to tell our server that we're sending back JSON. All right, now from here, let's set up one more property and it's going to be our body. So what we're going to do is actually send what we want to update our document with. I'm just going to say JSON dot stringify. And this is going to convert our JavaScript object into JSON for us. And I'm just going to say to do. And we're going to get the user's input. Well, now that we have our options set up, Let's call the done method to execute this fetch request. Here, we're going to get our response from the server. Now we're going to return that response and we're going to call a function called JSON. Now this response.json is going to return a promise. So I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to call it then. And it's going to give us our parsed data back. So now I'm just going to test to see whether or not we successfully updated our to do. I'm just going to say if data dot OK is equal to one. That means that everything went OK. So now what I need to do is actually get our to do element. So I'm just going to say let to do index equal. equal our to do ID. Next, what I want to do is actually set our data. So I'm just going to say to do index HTML is going to be set to the data that we just got back from the server. Now what I want to do is reset the user's input. So I'm just going to call the reset to do input function. So now I'm just going to scroll down just to check to see if we have our edit to do is being called. And it's being called here. All right, so let's actually test this out in our web browser to see if it actually works. I'm just going to save this. I'm going to open up the terminal. I'm going to clear it node app. And now let's head over to our browser. So from here, you can see that we have our application running. Just going to hit refresh just to make sure. And right here, I'm just going to type whatever. And now I'm going to hit edit. And you can see that our to do document was updated. So I'm just going to hit refresh again. Let's see if it persists to the database. And you can see that it is persisting. And let's try one more just to make sure. And you can see that it is indeed working. Welcome to part 11 of building our CRUD application from scratch. So in this tutorial, we're going to be doing some user input validation using Joy. So to get started, let's actually install Joy. I'm just going to come down here, npm install Joy. And now that we have our Joy package installed, let's actually include it within our application. So I'm just going to come up here. I'm going to say const Joy is equal to require Joy. Now from here, let's actually develop a schema for a to do document. Now, if you don't know what a schema is, it's basically a blueprint that an object has to follow. 
So let's come down here and let's define our schema. So I'm just gonna say const schema is equal to joy dot object. And now we wanna define our keys. Now from here, we're gonna give our properties and the type that they should be. So for example, we only have really one object within this tutorial and that's a to-do. So here I have a to-do and the type that this should be is of type string. So I'm just gonna say joy.string and we're gonna make it required. So when the user inputs his to-do, this schema is gonna make sure that it's a string and that it's not empty. So required means that if the user tries to submit a to-do that's empty, we're gonna get an error. If the user tries to submit a number instead of a string, we're gonna get an error. So that's how we're gonna validate user input. So I'm just gonna end a semicolon here. Now let's take a look at our routes. So what we wanna do is validate anything we get back from the user. So for example, this route parameter here, we would wanna validate. Now this is not a to-do object, but this is the primary key, but anything the user sends back to us, you would want to validate. So this request body, we would also wanna validate for. And if we take a look here, request body here, request params here, and that's pretty much it. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna do one example with you guys, and you guys could pretty much figure out how to do the rest of yourselves. So I'm gonna to choose to do our post route. So we're gonna validate the user input sent by the body. So from here, I'm gonna call joy.validate. And validate is a method which is gonna take three arguments. The first argument is the object that you wanna validate. So we're passing in user input. The second argument is the schema or the blueprint that you wanna check against user input. So we're just gonna pass in our schema we just created. And the third argument is our callback function. And we get the error and we get the result. Now from here, I'm gonna say, if there's an error, what I wanna do is we're gonna create an error. So I'm just gonna say const error is equal to new error. And we're gonna pass in the message that we wanna display to the user. So I'm just gonna say invalid input. Next, I'm gonna give this error a HTTP status code. So I'm just gonna say error.status and I'm just gonna set that to 400. Next, what I wanna do is call the next method and that's because we're gonna have a middleware handle our errors. So I'm just gonna say next and we're gonna pass in the error we just created. So from here, since we're using a middleware, we have to pass in next as a param up here. So now from here, let's code our else statement. So if there's no errors with the user's input, what do we want to do? So I'm just going to say else. And what we want to do is actually get our database. I'm just going to cut this out. I'm going to paste this in within here. And now here, what we can do is some more error handling. So right here, I could come here. Instead of just printing this out to the console, what I could do is exactly what I did above. So I could copy this. Let's paste this in here. And instead of saying invalid input, I could say something like this. I could say failed to insert to do document. And we're gonna leave the status code the same. And we're gonna call our middleware error handle here. So from here, we could go down to this else statement and we're gonna have to pass in a couple more things. And this is just to make it easier for the front end. So for example, we are gonna pass in a message and this message is going to be displayed if we successfully insert it into the database. So I'm just gonna say successfully inserted to do. The next thing that we're gonna pass in is an error property. And we're gonna set that to null. So that means that there was no errors. And we're gonna be using this to test in our front end. So this looks good to me. So now let's code our custom error handler, our custom middleware. So I'm just gonna go down here and 
let's put it here. So well, now I'm just going to say app.use and we're going to pass in our error object. Next is going to be the request object, the response object, and the next object. Now here, what I could do is actually send a response back from the server. So well, now I'm just going to say res.status and we're going to set the status to the error status that we set in our post route. So I'm just going to say error.status. Next, I'm going to call the JSON method. So we're going to be sending this back to the user. And from here, I'm going to pass in an error property. And this is going to be an object. And it's going to have a property of message. And we're going to pass in our error message. So I'm just going to say error message. All right. Now from here, what I want to do is let's head over to Bootstrap and let's get our alert that we're going to be using to display to the user. So let's go to Bootstrap and get our alert that we're going to be using to display to the user whether or not our post request was successful or not. So from here, I'm just going to go to search. I'm going to type alert. And you can see that we have a bunch of alerts here. What I want to do is get our success alert and we're going to be using this to display when we successfully posted something. And I want to use the danger alert when we get an error. I'm just going to come down here and we only need one of these. So I'm just going to pick up the danger one. I'm going to copy this and I'm just going to head back to Visual Studio Code. Now from here, I'm just going to save our app.js file. I'm going to go to index.html. And what I want to do is actually put this underneath our display. So right here, I'm just going to paste this here. And let's actually steal some code from our display. I'm just going to add a break here just to give us some space. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste this here. And what I want to do is get rid of this unordered list. And we're going to be putting our alerts here. So I'm just going to copy this, paste this in here. Let's tidy this up a bit. And what I want to do is actually get rid of this and let's add an ID attribute of message. All right, from here, let's actually scroll down to our script tag. And what we want to do is actually get our message that we just gave an ID for. So I'm just going to say const message. And we're going to be getting our ID. Now from here, I'm just going to say message.hide because I don't want to show it yet. Next thing I want to do is create a helper function. So I'm just going to come down here. I'm just going to say const display message. And the first parameter is going to be a flag, whether or not we should display the success alert or the danger alert. The second argument is going to be the message that we want to display. Now from here, I'm just going to say if flag. So if this is true and let's actually make a comment. So if we had a successful post, what we want to do is I'm going to say message dot remove class. And we're going to remove the alert dash danger class. And I'm just going to copy this paste this and we're going to change this to add class and we're going to add the success alert. Next, I'm going to say message.html and we're going to pass in the message that we want to display and I'm going to say message.show to actually display our alert. So now from here, since we have a success, we need a else statement to display the failure. So I'm just going to say else and now I'm just going to copy all of this. And pretty much we're going to do the opposite. So instead of saying remove danger class, we're going to remove the success class. And here we're going to be adding the danger class. And these two lines of code are going to be the same. So actually by coding this, I actually forgot to remove this part from our HTML. So yeah, so let's get rid of this. And we have our alert and we have our message. Okay, so that looks good. So now, Let's actually go down to our post. So here's our post. And from here, what we're going to do is actually wrap this if statement. So I'm just going to come up here. I'm going to say if 
and we're going to use the not symbol so data dot error so if there are no errors what we want to do is execute this block of code but what we want to do is actually get our alert to display i'm just going to say display message and we're going to set this to true because that means that everything went okay and then we're going to pass in the message that we want to display i'm just going to say data dot message and from here i'm going to make an else statement i'm just going to copy this paste this here and instead of true we're going to say false and let's display our error message so i'm just going to say data dot error dot message now from here, let's actually go back down. We do have to reset our to do input. So I'm just going to call that. So now let me just save this and let's actually test this out. So I'm just going to come down here, node app. And let's see what we got wrong. So joy dot string dot require says require is not a function. So let's go back to our app dot JS. And it's probably not required. It's probably required. So now let's save this. Let's clear the terminal node app. All right. So now our application is up and running. And now let's actually test this in the browser. So now we have our to do application up and running. So now if I was type a string and hit create, you see that we get successfully inserted to do. And if I was to have an empty string and hit create, you can see that nothing's updating. So that means that we made an error. So now let's head back to Visual Studio Code. So from here, let's just go back to our index.html file. Let's actually take a look at this. So we have our if statement here. And that's pretty much the reason because this if block is only supposed to be wrapped around this if condition. But we also have our else block here. So this code isn't being executed. So let's actually copy this. Let's get that out of there. And from here, we just paste that here. And we don't need two resets here. So now let's save this and now let's head back to the browser. So I'm just gonna hit refresh to reload the page. And we could test this one more time. So we inserted our to do okay. Now we have a blank user input, hit create, and you can see that we get a warning, invalid input. So that's pretty much how you can validate user input using Joy for our to-do application.